Well, you know, from the start, uh, as we started looking at the plans, our primary objective has been cost and max really maximizing um, the utilization of the facility in a cost-effective manner. And I think we've approached this in, in a number of ways, um, which I think works well. Uh, one is to make sure it's sized properly for the, a town of our size. Two, we emphasize reuse of the building if it was uh, efficient. And so we're renovating uh, the Pond Cove Annex, uh, which is both efficient and uh, harkens back to sort of the character of the town and history of the town. And three, we've, been sh we've, we've really focused uh, along the planning and design phase on materials and systems which will um, provide durability and sustainability and really maximize operating efficiency. So I really feel like the plan that we have now is one which is uh, both really effective as a library but also very cost effective for uh, residents and uh, users. That that you see right there is the oldest Pond Cove school building. From, see the bricks change, the foundation where the old Pond Cove school was separated and moved back here when they built the new Pond Cove school building which was built in 1912. And that's what we call the Annex, or Thomas Memorial Library. Well, when I went to school here, this was, the, this was the, the girls' entrance to the school. And on the other side of the building, it was the boys. There was always a separate entrance in all schools. All one-room schoolhouses had two doors, one for boys, one for girls. We never used this, this entrance. Oh. Except for the uh, fire alarm would go off, and we, but some of the kids would come out these doors. That's the only time we ever used it. I've got a picture of um, a cl class graduation yeah? oh. picture. I know. Um, of here, by yeah. the old This, the the, this was part. the original one room schoolhouse, right there. And, and Mr. Thomas taught there in something like 1880 or some such time. He came from a reasonably wealthy Portland family. And he was going to Bowdoin College, took a year off and taught school. And he, they made, he made a library out of it, using his own private uh, library and uh, donated to the town's cave was. Um, my grandfather donated the acre of land. I think what it comes down to is that the Thomas Memorial Library, um, since it was first given to the town in 1919 by William Witchery Thomas, uh, has been a vibrant part of the community. And over the course of the years, since that initial gift, the town has very responsibly managed that asset and on a number of different occasions has upgraded and added additions. And the time has simply come uh, after our last renovation over 30 years ago to do that again and to simply you know, renovate the uh, facility and uh, help it to provide the services that it needs to provide to the new century. What we've ended up with is a complex of buildings that are just kind of hung together, strung together if you will, and it's something of a rabbit warren. There are, I think, over 30 separate rooms in this complex, and they lo are located on five separate levels. Um, so it's a difficult building to get around in. It's the same on the other. I understand it's, uh, I've never seen one work. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it <clears throat> is frightening to some handicapped people to ride on these things. Uh, there was a while when we were forbidden to have two people on at a time, so you put someone in in a wheelchair, and the thing would shudder, and they were alone in that strange little cubicle. It, it isn't a comforting ride. You know, there's an awful lot about the building that simply needs to be updated. We started uh, with this project in the planning uh, stage last October, and uh, we first came to look at this project. We were just very, very excited about this building, and 
uh, the old uh, Pond Cove Annex building and some of the, the qualities that this building had. And so our first inclination is how can we save this building? It's really uh, quite remarkable. And, and still you know, keep the feeling of the old but incorporate the new and, and incorporate a new building. And one of the other things we, we noticed when we were on site was that there was quite a bit of grade drop off in the back south side of the site towards the school. We thought, wow, what a wonderful opportunity here to make a connection. Uh, the, this corner is a very active corner uh, and the front entrance of the library and down to the school. So we wanted to create a walking path uh, that had a, perhaps a reading garden, some nice landscaping and an opportunity for people to walk down and see this connection between the library and the schools. Uh, we also saw this as an opportunity for a lower level entrance to the children's library and so we've created a, uh, an entrance at the lower level here and uh, for, for young families to um, come in and, and use the lower level library and also a, a place for the family place library which was a very important part of this project. Well, we're using uh, a lot of durable materials on the inside. Uh, the feeling is going to be light and airy, uh, creating lots of flexibility in the space, but we're also going to be accommodating the acoustics, as, which is a very important part of a library. And, uh, and there will be lots of natural sunlight to uh, make you feel welcoming and at home. Also a lot of natural materials we're using in appropriate places, such as the entrance lobby and the gallery space below. We're using um, maple, uh, a light wood, to, or natural materials. And, um, on the exterior brick and clapboards and shingles were very appropriate to the, the town center materials. So both on the interior and the exterior we're using warm welcoming materials that, that are durable but also familiar. So I really feel like the plan that we have now is one which is uh, both really effective as a library but also very cost effective for uh, residents and uh, users.